NBA 2K25 has been out for quite some time now, and I think I can help you all out with becoming the best slasher on the game. In this video, we're going to go over dunk requirements, how to get contact dunks, and the best dunk animations to have on your mob player. So first of all, shout out to Slasher Gang. We are still in the building. If you want to see more NBA 2K25, be sure to drop a like on the video and be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell because we'll have 2K dropping heavy over here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So you jump into the builder, you say, hey, I want my player to be able to dunk. Well, that's not that difficult to be honest. Sometimes NBA 2K will give you dunk packages just for breathing. Like you can go 55 driving dunk, 35 vertical, be under 610 and you can get a Clay Thompson dunk package. Now let's say you want to be a dunker. Well, that's a little bit different and I'm here to help you out with that. So if you want to be a primary slasher, of course you have to look into the posterizer badge and the posterizer badge requires you to upgrade your driving dunk and your vertical. For bronze posterizer, you're looking at a 73 driving dunk with a 65 vertical. For silver posterizer, you're looking at an 87 driving dunk with a 75 vertical. And I will say, if you want to be able to dunk and be able to do other things as well, I think silver is the best bang for your buck. Remember, you don't need posterizer to go for contact dunks necessarily. This badge just helps you dunk the ball when people are in the area. So silver is still cool to me, but once again, I want to be a slasher. That means golden up. That's gonna get you the big contact dunks. For gold, you're going to need 93 driving dunk, 80 vertical. For most people, gold will be all you need. For Hall of Fame, you're looking at a 96 driving dunk, 85 vertical. Hall of Fame works really well on NBA 2K25 in my opinion. And honestly, if you want to have a decent build, I do not recommend going above Hall of Fame, but if you want to be straight degenerate with it, Legend Posterizer is going to cost you 99 driving dunk, 90 vertical. And that's cool. Just know if you go Legend Posterizer, the rest of your build is going to suffer. I say if you want Legend Posterizer that badly, just go Hall of Fame and use Max Plus One. Then you will get Legend Posterizer. Only need 96 driving dunk and you can put those points somewhere else. That's what I did. So once again, if you just want to be a primary slasher, I recommend Gold. Hall of Fame is cool. But if you just want to have that balance in your build, Silver isn't bad either. Going for bronze posterizer, I don't know. If you get it, you get it, that's cool. But if you're going to be a dunker, I recommend silver and up for sure. So now let's take a look at some of these animations you may unlock. It's a lot of dunk animations and I know looking at them, you're like, man, I want them all, bro. I want to be able to do everything. I want to be able to do flashy dunks. I want to be able to do all this stuff. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Most of these dunk packages are bait. So you can see with the two foot moving dunk animations, this is what I have equipped. If it's not a contact dunk, I do not want a two foot dunk, mainly because the two foot dunks are slower than the one foot dunks. If you're on the fast break and you go for a two foot dunk, it's gonna slow you up. You might get hemmed up, you might get blocked. And I wasted way too many points on my driving dunk to get blocked on the fast break. I'm not going for it. So that's why I stay away from the two foot moving dunks. Now with the contact dunks, I have the pro and the elite equipped. I just feel like having contact dunks with the two foot dunks are just fine. And you're gonna get those animations. I'll teach you how to trigger those later in the video. Moving over to the one foot dunks. Once again, it's the same thing. I have more of them equipped because you can go up faster, but I just want to reduce the chances of me getting blocked. So I do like this baseline reverse off one. That's a staple of mine, right? If I get called to go on a back door cut, I just do a baseline reverse. It's an easy two points every single time. With the athletic one handers off one, I do like this because you take off kind of far away from the basket. He has a couple in here where he caught it back and it's pretty annoying, but for the most part, it's a safe dump package. So that's why I have it equipped. All the other ones like the switcheroo and the bat scratchers and the windmills, those always get blocked on 2K. I just stay away from them. When it comes to the contact dunk, I only have pro equipped because that's all I get to unlock. But once again, pro is all I need to be honest. A contact dunk is a contact dunk, a bucket is a bucket. I'll teach you how to trigger these later in the video. But if you go for elite, they're good too. But once again, you need 99 driving dunk and 90 vertical. I don't recommend doing that to your build, but hey, you pay for your game, you can do your own thing. You also have the small contact dunks off one. Now I've been hearing a bunch of things about small players not being able to really get contact dunks. And I think that's because strength plays a little bit of a part, but I do see a few six fives getting contact dunks. But either way, if you can get them, it's a decent dunk package. All right, moving over to the signature dunks. Once again, I don't have too many equipped because most of them have two foot dunks, which 
once again i stay away from those some of them have bat scratchers and i stay away from those also because i don't want to get blocked so these are the dunk animations i like to use i use zach Levine, even though he has a ridiculous windmill in there it doesn't come out a lot so i don't mind it you know he has a few dunks where he can take off from far away and those are the ones i care about same with lebron he has one cop back animation but the other dunks in this dunk package are really good he also gets a standard dunk in there so that's fire i use jalen johnson jalen johnson might be my favorite dunk package in nba 2k25 it works really well in a half court set and of course i use russell westbrook i've been using russell westbrook dump package since they added it in 2k explosive takeoff really fast really quick it works in the half court set it works on a fast break it's easy money all right so now i'm going to teach you how to trigger some of these dunks it's funny because i just did an instagram video with 2k on this you know how to get contact dunks and people were like yo bro what happened to just pressing square bro old oh, man you can still press square if you want to but if you're a slasher you want to have the most control and you're going to have the most control dunking with the right stick if you want to dunk with the left hand move the right stick to the left if you want to dunk with the right hand move the right stick to the right if you want to do a flashy dunk move the right stick down if you want to do a safe dunk move the right stick up cool if you do this i do recommend always moving the right stick away from your opponent you might be able to catch a contact dunk even if you just press square you might be able to catch a contact dunk but when we do contact dunks we want them to be intentional so this is how you time a contact dunk when you're driving to the paint you go up on the right stick and then down that's how you activate the dunk meter for contact dunks now you have three different ones you have arrow ring and dial which one you use is up to you i've tried out all of them and i definitely recommend arrow ring and dial are cool but sometimes they're hard to see for me personally arrow it just makes sense so when it comes to arrow 2k wants you to release it when the arrows match up at the top but you really have to account for latency so i found that it was easier to kind of release it right around here right before it gets to the top and most of the time is green i think the meter on nba 2k25 is better than the one on nba 2k24 it's different but for me it's more serviceable so yeah release it right before you get to the top and you should be good once again this is going up and down on the right stick to activate that dump meter when it comes to ring and dial 2k wants you to release it right before the ring and dial disappears but once again you have to account for latency so you want to do it a little bit before it disappears and that's why ring and dial is so tough to me personally because it's kind of tough to time with arrow i can see when i really need to release it and so if i could recommend any dump meter to use it's going to be arrow now when should you go for dump meters it's all about positioning for the most part if a center is playing outside the restricted area he's most likely going to pull you out of that dunk animation i mean that happens on nba 2k25 regardless not as much as it did on 2k24 it still happens on 2k25 a good amount though and if somebody is outside of that restriction area the game is not going to let you dunk that here are two things you need to look for one thing you have to look for is the restriction circle and where the defender is if they are behind that restriction circle it is going to be a poster no matter who's there if it's a guard center if they're in that dead zone and you go for a contact dunk you should more than likely dunk them now sometimes they do pull you out i'm not denying that sometimes you will get stripped by a guard but most of the time if somebody's in that dead zone you're going to dunk on them here's another example center is sitting all the way under the rim it's going to be automatic again if they're in front of that circle you might not get that animation off but if they're behind it yeah most of the time it's a dunk bro the second thing you need to look for is if a defender is on your hip if a defender is on your hip it's safe to go up for their dunk you see i can manipulate it sometimes with that triple threat spin out get him to the side of me and then i go up for the dunk because it's safe they do have some dunks you can go up for it if they're trying to guard you tight but we don't want to get lucky with the animation once again we want this to be really intentional once again you might have to do a little bit of dribbling do some manipulating to get the defender on your hip because most of the time people just square up but if they are on your hip you know you're playing five out you're going for a dunk they're going to be on your hip if you're playing from the corner do a triple threat spin out they're going to be on your hip in this situation he jumps at me i'm not even sure how he got back into the play but you can see he's riding me to the paint pause if needed and so the dunk 
is completely safe to go up for it. Most of the time, you will complete the contact dunk, easy money. Another way you can get them on your hip on purpose is the fast break. I love running the fast break with this build. You just need teammates that will trust you in transition. On a fast break, most of the time, you should probably run to the corner, but defenders will always be on your side on a fast break, whether they're trying to bait, whether they're trying to bump you, get a stop, but it's just not going to happen. <laughs> I learned this late on NBA 2K24, bro. If it's a close game, yeah, hit the corners, run the lanes, shoot the three on the fast break. But if you have a slasher and you're up by a little bit, you're trying to have some fun, yeah, yeah, hit your slasher on that fast break because you see right here, no matter what, somebody is going to be to the left of you or right of you. That's going to be an easy contact dunk every single time, bro. Every single time. Unless, like I said before, the point guard or some of these locks, they be reaching when you go up, they strip you. I'm not denying that that doesn't happen. It definitely happens. But for the most part, that's how you get contact dunks, man. Have somebody on your hip, have somebody in the restricted circle, you're dunking everything. So that's pretty much the basics of being a slasher. Of course, you still have your spin dunks, your Euro dunks, your hop step dunks also, but I'll go over those in a different video. This is just what you need to be able to start dunking on NBA 2K25 and what you should look for in order to get contact dunks. So I hope this video was able to help at least one person. Thank you all for watching. You all be easy. Peace.